Hello, my listener. Uh, we are back again with another question, which uh, is a continuation of our previous lesson, which we discussed some times back on simple interest. And this question was coming from the topic on money, and this one now is on compound interest. Remember previously, we discussed about a simple interest, and I promised you that we are going to uh, work out or to discuss about compound interest so that we can compare the two types of interest, we get to understand what is their difference. There are several requests that I have received from uh, my viewers, and some of the questions have not yet addressed them. So I, I request you to be patient. I will try to get time so that I can see what I can do so that I address them. Now, this question, as I've said, it is a continuation of our previous lesson on simple interest. And before we, uh, I, I, I explain or demonstrate how to do it, let us first of all remind ourselves on what is interest. And by the end of this script, the runner should be able to calculate a problem on compound interest. Now, interest, we said, it is the money paid uh, either for money borrowed or deposited. Remember, some bank, uh, bank institutions normally lend money or you can even deposit your money there. And if you allow your money to remain for a certain period of time, the bank can give you some interest. That is, some money will accrue on top of what you had deposited or what you had borrowed, and that money will be added to your uh, previous amount. And we said that there are two types of interest. The first interest was simple interest, which we already discussed. And the other one now is compound interest. This one is uh, being taught in class 8. And it is one of the new concepts taught in that class. Now, uh, before we discuss this question, we said that interest is calculated by taking principal. You multiply by time and then you multiply by rate which is uh, worked out as percentage. Principal is the initial money which either you have borrowed or you have deposited. And time is in years. Now this question is on compound interest and it was done in the KCP for the year 2018. Now what is compound interest or how do we calculate compound interest? Now compound interest is calculated this way. Now, you take, or rather the interest is calculated every year, and the interest of the first year is added to the original principle of the second year. I want to explain, and before I explain, let us go to this question and read it, so that we understand it. And it is always important to read the question and understand so that you get to know what the examiner uh, wants you to do. Here we are told that a businessman saved shillings 900,000 in a fixed deposit account which earned compound interest at the rate of 15% per annum. How much money did he have in the bank at the end of the second year? The principal here is 900,000. The rate is 15% per annum, and that money was to uh, remain in the bank for a period of two years. I have said that to calculate compound interest, the interest of the first year is added to the principal or to the original principal and then you work out the other interest. Now if you look at what we have here, we have the principal here and the money is to stay in the bank for two years. So what do you do? You calculate uh, interest of the first year. The normal way you do whenever you are calculating simple interest. But now time is one because you have to calculate interest of the first year and now that interest which you are going to get you should add it to the principal so that now when it comes now to the second year you now have a new principal which will now include the original principal plus now the interest which you have already calculated 
Now let's see how we go about this one. The information that is given in this question is principal, which is already given there as 900,000, rate is 15 percent, and time is two years. So what do you do? You first of all calculate the interest of the first year, and how do you calculate that one? As I have said, you just take uh, your, your principal, you multiply by one and then you multiply by the rate one is the first year and i'm calling this one interest one because it's the first interest for the first year now with this one now you just take nine hundred thousand you multiply by 15 over 100 and then you deal with those zeros as uh, in the normal way and now finally you'll be left with nine thousand you multiply by 15 to get the first interest as 100, rather, uh, 135,000. This is now the interest of the first year. Now, what do you do after this? You are now going to take that interest of the first year, you add it to the principal to get this new principal here. And of course, you are taking 900,000, you earned 135,000 to get this new principal, which will now be about 1 million 35,000 shillings. Now, let us now calculate the interest of the second year so that you understand what we are saying. You are now going to take, or rather, we first of all call it interest too, you take this. Um, new principle here which includes the original uh, principle plus the new interest that you have calculated for the first year once you add the two you are now getting this figure here which is about a million and 35,000 shillings multiplied by another one more year times the rate of course now this now will be uh, 1 million that 5,000 shillings multiplied by 15 over 100 and as usual uh, as usual it is good to deal with those uh, zeros so that now you are left with um, 10,350 you multiply this one by 50 so that now you get the interest for the second year which will now be uh, 155,250 now we have this first interest here and then we have the second interest here this was for the first year and this is now the interest for the second year which has been calculated after you take that interest of the first year added to the original principle so now if you go back now to the question you are asked how much money did he have in the bank at the end of the second year? Now to get this, you are now going to get the original principal. You add the interest for the first year and then you add the interest for the second year. And therefore in total, or rather the total amount of money that will be in the bank will be the 900,000. You add a... Uh, 135,000 that is the interest for the first year and also you add uh, 155,250 the interest for the second year and then you add everything so that you get the total amount of money that will be in the bank at the end of the second year which will now be equals to shillings uh, this one is 11 million now 1 million 190,250 this is now going to be the total amount of money that this businessman will have in the bank at the end of the second year now there is something that is very important here as i've told you it is always important to read the question and understand sometimes you may find the examiner asking uh, you a question like this what will be the interest at the beginning of the second year not at the end of the second year but at the beginning of the second year in that case you are only going to work out the interest for the first year and then you add to the principal 
So that is a, a trick that uh, an examiner can, uh, ca can give you so that you get confused. So and that is why I'm telling you it is always important to read the question and understand what you are required to do. Otherwise, that is the way you work out a compound interest. And sometimes I may give you uh, some work concerning compound interest so that you practice and get to see how, whether you have understood how to work out compound interest. And also, in your textbooks, it is always good to go and check that topic where it is, do the exercises that are there so that you get to understand. Remember, to be successful in mathematics, you must keep on doing practice. And practice, practice will make you perfect in this subject. Thank you very much and goodbye. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel to continue getting more and more uh, new materials. Goodbye.